If you ever thought of growing your own herbs and veggies, looking for some inspiration, or you just like to watch how other people are working in the garden, then this video is right for you. We will cover our indoor and outdoor gardening tips and real before and after results. Coming right up! Welcome back to Comfy Boost, your weekly dose of wellness, comfort and beauty ideas and challenges to apply straight in your busy schedules. This week we're going to get our fingers dirty and we're going to create a herb garden. Actually, in this herb garden we're going to have not only herbs but also some veggies and also some berries. But you'll see later. Anyway, we're going to create a herb garden. Well, actually two of those. Well, because she lives in a house and I live a flat, so these are completely different environments, so we wanted to share the best we could from both of the worlds. So why are we doing this? Well, the answer actually is so simple. You can always have as much or as little fresh and nutritious ingredients adding to your meals whenever you like. And the key words here are really fresh and nutritious. Haven't you had a moment when you go to the local market or a store and you buy some really nice fresh herbs like dills or basil and then in a few days they all dry out? Or you are just cooking for your guests and right before they arrive you realize you have run out of the herbs. Or the times when you're coming back from work and it's been a really long day and you check your fridge and it's completely empty and you don't want to go to the store on an empty stomach because you know what, the, what then happens, you're just taking everything you don't need and you need everything there is. And in this case, when you have a herb garden, you can always prepare a small salad and snack on it and then go to the store already without hunger. And you never need to stop your cooking because you have run out of some crucial ingredient for it. Like for example, a piece of dill. Yeah, so it saves your time. And another super good benefit, it saves you money because you only buy seedlings once and you put them in the soil and then they give you crops all through the season. So this is a really good point. And regarding nutrition, here health comes into picture. Because when we are talking about creating your own herb garden, you actually know exactly what you have put in there. You know what kind of soil you have used, you know if you have used any fertilizers, you know if you have used any pesticides. Basically, you know everything about the herbs or the veggies or the berries that you created and what you are actually eating. And this comes really with a good benefit that you always have some really nice vitamins added to your dishes like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K and others. And plus on topping on that you get a really nice dose of antioxidants which helps you boost your immunity. And on top of that it's also a great hobby and a great design element. You can check that on Pinterest. There are so many ideas that you can use when creating your herb garden. We are going to share ours in a few minutes, but if you have some questions, link them below. And now, before we dig in, we did a small research on what there is to know about indoor and outdoor gardening creation. In order for you to replicate what we did, follow us in the next minutes. First and probably the most important thing is the location. If you are just planning where to create your garden, then look for the place with at least 6 hours of daytime light. If the place is already set, look for the best spots in available places to plant. Second, do planning of what you want to grow, approximate height and size of the plants, to find out the best location. Meaning that your green babies have enough space to grow and they are not giving shadows to some smaller plants behind. Third, use good quality soil, because it's the basis of healthy plants. Avoid too sandy or just clay soil. You are aiming for rich soil that holds moisture and drains well at the same time. A good one is loose and fluffy by touch. It's filled with air that's needed for roots. In our case, we will buy one from the market. You can just join us or go outside and have a look what you have available. Another thing to keep in mind is watering and drainage. Make sure that your garden will get enough water, either from specially created water systems or you will water it regularly on your own. Plus, make sure that excess water, for example from heavy rain, will not stay in your flower beds. 
For this, a good option is any kind of raised flower beds that are at least few inches higher than the rest of the ground. Last but not least are weather conditions. Types of plants you can grow and when you should grow them depend on the location and climate zone you are, and it as well will affect your watering schedule and needs for drainage. Regarding the indoor garden, it is pretty similar. You also need to look for a balcony or place in the apartment where there is enough daylight and it doesn't get too hot or cold and can be ventilated. For indoor gardeners, the planning phase, I believe, is the top priority. Things to consider are pot sizes and shapes to have enough space for the desired plants and that fits in your dedicated space. Plus, in the best case scenario, it fits also in the interior. By the way, if you have some spare monies, there are even some smart pots that tell you when you should be watering your plants, so that is a good option. To make your plants healthy, you also need to get a good quality soil. Plan watering schedules and take care of drainage, because the bottom of the pot is the furthest where water can go. If the roots are too wet, they can rot. But with trying to avoid too wet soil, you can end up giving your plants too little water and again, not a great outcome. So what can you do? Either get pots with a drainage hole and place some plates under it, so you don't destroy your floor and flood your neighbors. Remember to remove excess water from them when there is any. Or try double potting, slipping a container inside a slightly larger one. Or if you have those spare monies as I mentioned, you can take a look at some smart pots. We have linked some of those below in our description, so check those out. Now it's time to show you what we have in mind. Come with us! So here is the actual place dedicated for the outdoor garden. It has sun from around 8 or 9 in the morning till the evening. As you can see, the garden is divided in four sections with really mixed plants and no real order. There are some nice herbs, then suddenly berries, then herbs again, then the same herbs as before, and some more, and some random unknown plants in the middle, and so on. So what's the plan? We will make each corner dedicated to special types of plants. This means moving around a lot of available herbs, removing the ones that we do not recognize, and adding additional seedlings. Corner number one, herbs and spices like thyme, basil, dills, rosemary, and others. Number two, different types of strawberries, because we love berries and there are never too many. Big, small, white, red, we'll take any. Number three, lettuce leaves, peppers, spring onions, tomatoes, or in simple words, things for your salad. And number four, plants for tea making, like peppermint and lavender. Now let's have a look at the indoor plan. We will use the furthest part of the balcony that has around 6 hours of daylight and some nice morning sun. It is also connected to the kitchen, so it helps with maintaining good logistics. As on the balcony, we have planned to have some really nice entertainment area for when guests are come over. We didn't want to overload the balcony with herbs. Also, they need to look really nice so that it would fit with the outdoor furniture like a hand with a glove. We will place 8 pots with double bottom and plant. First, a huge pot with a lot of spring onions. You may be laughing at this, but spring onions are super rich with antioxidants and vitamins and my spouse eats them in bunches every day. A middle sized pot with dills work amazingly with salads, different veggies, boiled or cooked. And also you can imagine dills in general can be placed almost anywhere. Then, a smaller pot with rosemary, it is a great addition for cooking meats, as well as work awesomely with sweet potatoes and garlic. Next one will be a smaller pot with pineapple mint, great for cocktails, teas, desserts, and just, they just smell nice. The smallest pot we will have with parsley, it does work well with freshly boiled potatoes, soups, salads, you name it. Finally, two smaller pots and a huge one too for strawberries. I guess you know what to do with those. The plan is ready, so let's go shopping. We need pots for indoor garden, soil, biological fertilizer and seedlings. Okay, now we have everything we need, so let's get into our gardening outfits.
Okay, finally our six hours in the garden have passed and we are ready to show you the results. Voila! This is our awesome outdoor garden ready. We're going to show you in a few seconds on the screen how it looks up close. And also the indoor garden you're going to see right after that one. Due to the changes we made for the outside garden, we now have a lot of mint leaves left. In the following weeks we will share some awesome, nutritious and super delicious recipes, because healthy food is also super tasty, and our tips where and how to use mint so it doesn't go to waste. Now let's have a look at the indoor garden. Okay, last thing before we finish, don't forget to water your plants regularly as well as don't forget to take out the excess water in case you're doing the indoor garden inside your house. Indoors. 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 Otherwise your herb or your veggie roots might rot and that in this case you would not get any crops. Well, at least none of those would be in good quality, right? And then? Just wait for your crops to grow and you can harvest fresh, nice, tasty and delicious herbs, veggies and berries straight from your garden. If you like our video, give us a thumbs up. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, hit the bell button to get notified about all of the upcoming videos. We're going to post really a lot of exciting new content coming up each week on Wednesdays. So stay tuned. Also, what Comfy Boost is about? Comfy Boost is all about exposing the deepest secrets of wellness. Thank you guys for watching and see you next week. Bye! Ciao.